Incredible, everyone. As we approach Flight 7, the excitement only grows. Today, I'm thrilled to share some groundbreaking news. This flight could mark the very first reuse of a Starship component, and it's none other than the Raptor engine. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? But it's true. Confirmed by, <laughs> you guessed it, Elon Musk and SpaceX. This milestone would further solidify SpaceX's position as a trailblazer in the space industry, setting them even further apart from the competition. At the same time, over in China, ambitious plans for numerous new and reusable rockets are also taking shape this year. So let's go ahead and dive into all this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The upcoming Flight 7 will showcase an exciting combination of the S-33 and B-14, pairing a V-1 booster with a V-2 Starship. While SpaceX has officially transitioned to the V-2 configuration, it's surprising and perhaps a little disappointing that we still haven't seen the debut of the Raptor 3 engine, which was introduced last year. But that unexpected delay sets the stage for an intriguing twist in the first Starship flight of 2025. And the twist is that this flight will reuse a Raptor engine from Flight 5. Looking back to October last year, SpaceX stunned the world with the groundbreaking success of catching the Super Heavy B-12 during its landing. This feat had never been accomplished before. Beyond the sheer audacity of the maneuver, it introduced a new era of potential for reusability in Starship operations. However, as of now, there's no indication that B-12 itself will fly again. That's understandable, Starship has moved on to V2, rendering a V1 booster less relevant for future missions. And honestly, B-12 deserves a place in a museum as a testament to SpaceX's engineering ingenuity. While the booster hardware may retire, the engines it carried are another story. SpaceX hasn't yet transitioned to Raptor 3, which means the Raptor engines from B-12 remain viable for reuse. And now that possibility has become a reality. In a recently captured image, a notable Raptor engine number 314 was spotted. This engine features a distinctive symbol, a pizza slice, etched above its serial number, earning it the nickname Raptor Pie. After B-12's triumphant landing in October, it was removed from the orbital launch mount. During this process, Raptor Pi was clearly visible, and now side-by-side -side comparisons with a recent photo reveal a fascinating development. Space Sudoer predict the Raptor Pi has been installed on another booster, likely B-14. Musk himself added fuel to this speculation by replying to the observation with a simple but telling, good observation. This tweet, though brief, strongly suggests that Raptor Pi is set to fly again in the upcoming mission. This development underscores the brilliance of SpaceX's Mechazilla arm landing method. While this approach is riskier than other landing techniques, it involves landing directly at the launch site, surrounded by critical systems like fuel and infrastructure, it offers unparalleled advantages. The Mechazilla arm enables SpaceX to land Starship intact with incredible speed. Once caught by the chopsticks, Starship can be refurbished and prepped for its next flight almost immediately. This method lays the foundation for drastically reduced turnaround times, potentially reaching daily or even hourly launch cadences. Such frequency is a game changer for SpaceX, enabling it to increase launch rates, lower costs, and maintain a competitive edge. Moreover, this innovation brings SpaceX closer to its goal of creating the first fully reusable rocket, revolutionizing space travel in both affordability and efficiency. The reuse of Raptor Pi demonstrates how this method is already paying off. Engines like Pi are among the most complex and challenging systems to perfect mainly in these early Starship flights. But SpaceX has made remarkable strides. After addressing initial issues, the company has significantly upgraded the Raptor engine system, achieving consistent performance across recent flights. These improvements include precise aviation and shutdown sequences, flawless navigation and landing, and reliable operation in space. 
With such advancements, the upcoming debut of Raptor 3 is even more exciting. This next generation engine promises a more optimized design, greater reliability, and further enhancements to reusability, paving the way for even greater achievements. But before we witness Raptor 3 in action, we'll see Raptor Pi and its companions take the stage once again. Their performance in Flight 7 is sure to make waves. So, are you ready to cheer on Raptor Pi? If you are, comment Let's Go Pi! And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Join us as we continue to follow SpaceX's incredible journey and witness the future of space exploration unfold before our very eyes. In the meantime, reusability is indeed a game changer, and SpaceX's Raptor engine is poised to leave competitors in the dust. To date, SpaceX stands alone in its successful reuse of rocket engines, a feat pioneered with the Merlin engines on the Falcon rocket. This achievement is a testament to their innovation, as SpaceX remains one of the few organizations globally to master reusing rocket components. The increasing number of booster reuses demonstrates the exceptional reliability of Merlin engines, setting the stage for even greater advancements with Raptor. Historically, no rocket engine has truly excelled in reusability, but now, inspired by SpaceX's groundbreaking success, other organizations are attempting to catch up. Blue Origin, for example, developed the BE-4, a Methalox engine intended to compete with the Raptor. The BE-4 made its debut on the Vulcan Centaur mission in early 2024. However, as of now, these engines remain untested for reuse. Blue Origin is working toward reusability with plans to land the New Glenn booster on a drone ship. But even if successful, the process of reusing BE-4 engines will present significant challenges. Moving on across the globe, China's space industry has built a reputation for closely mimicking SpaceX's designs. Several private startups in China have adopted SpaceX-like rockets, combining elements of Falcon 9 and Starship. Despite their efforts, no Chinese rocket engine has been successfully reused even by companies that have managed orbital launches. This gap highlights just how far behind SpaceX's competitors remain in the race for true reusability. With the Raptor engine, SpaceX is set to widen this gap even further. Building on the success of the Merlin engine, the Raptor promises to take reusability to the next level. Current advancements, including the Raptor 2 variant and its upcoming successor, Raptor 3, are key to this program. The Raptor 3 is expected to enhance reusability, not only for the engine itself, but for other Starship systems, such as the heat shield. SpaceX's continued innovation in catching and recovering both the booster and upper stage will play a vital role in achieving full reusability. I predict that Raptor 3 will debut when both the Starship booster and upper stage transition to their next versions, likely during Flight 8 or Flight 9. At SpaceX's current pace, these flights could occur in the first quarter of the year. Importantly, these missions will aim to catch both stages of Starship further advancing the potential for Raptor reuse. If successful, SpaceX might be able to refurbish and reflight these engines by mid-year. This timeline would leave competitors, particularly Blue Origin, far behind. SpaceX may well reuse Raptor 3 engines before Blue Origin can even launch its second New Glenn rocket. While SpaceX charges ahead, China is ramping up efforts to enhance its own capabilities. The Long March family of rockets, a cornerstone of China's state-owned space program, is expanding to include reusable models. Before introducing the advanced Long March 9 or 10 versions, China is focusing on intermediate upgrades to bolster its launch capabilities. The Long March 8A, for instance, features a larger and more powerful second stage compared to its predecessor, allowing it to carry payloads of up to 7 tons to sun-synchronous orbit. This rocket is slated for its inaugural launch as early as January. Similarly, the Long March 12A is an upgraded reusable version of the expendable Long March 12. This model is designed to utilize liquid oxygen and methane engines aligning with commercial needs. If all goes well, the Long March 12A could also launch this January, targeting an altitude of 75 kilometers. Private Chinese companies are also joining the reusability race. Landspace, for example, is preparing to launch the Zhuchui 3, a rocket heavily inspired by SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Starship. Following the success of the Zhuchui 2, the Zhuchui 3 will aim to achieve reusability with its first launches expected early this year. 
Another notable contender is the Tianlong 3, which suffered a setback during a static fire test last year, but remains on track for a debut in the first half of the year. Other private players, such as CAS Space with its Connecticut 2 rocket, iSpace with the Hyperbola 3, and Galactic Energy with the Ceres 2, are all planning launches in the near future. These companies are striving to incorporate reusability into their designs, albeit with varying degrees of success. Despite these efforts, SpaceX remains unrivaled. Let's watch closely as the company solidifies its position this year and beyond. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.